Okay, so now we're going to get ready to move this machine and then pack it up. One of the most important things that we have to do is get the back box down. That's number one. Um, number two, we have to sit the machine on its back and then remove its legs in summary. So step number one is getting the machine forward away from the other machines or the wall or you know whatever happens to be behind your particular machine. Um, that's important because you're going to need quite a lot of room behind it um, because when the machine tilts back of course it goes backwards. So first thing I'm going to do is shift it. Now what that does mean is that I'm going to have to put the back box down just temporarily. Um, even when shifting machines short distances I quite like to put the back box down. A lot of people wouldn't bother. Uh, maybe that's fair enough. But I'm going to do it here anyway. So first thing I have to do get some sort of fabric or something, cardboard, whatever, just to protect the paint on the back box. Now, in order to flip this forward, there's a latch on the back, and there should actually be bolts inside, but most machines by this stage are actually missing those, so uh, quite often machines of this age, the only thing you need to do is release the latch behind the back box. If this machine was going on to uh, a site somewhere, um, so it was going to get a bit of abuse from random players, I would say definitely fit the bolts inside the back box. If it's just for home use, well, you probably still should, but uh, this machine hasn't had them for I don't know how long. Uh, certainly before I got the thing, they were not in there. And it's been fine ever since, and most of the machines I have here actually don't have those bolts in there. So yeah, good practice to have them in, but uh, never caused me any problems, so, you know, take that as you will. Alright, so I'll show you the latch. Don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. Oh, yeah, looks fine. So, here you can see it's just a little spring latch. So, all you do is reach underneath it. Now, when you do this, you've got to be quite careful that the back box doesn't fit forward. On this machine, the back box is not in any danger of doing that. I mean, you can, as you can see, it just falls back. So, that's normally how it will be. Uh, but um, I wouldn't guarantee that, so it's one of those things that's good to be a bit careful of. So now that's released, the back box is actually free to move. And also potentially quite dangerous, you wouldn't want to play the machine like that, because if you nudge the thing or something like that, you're going to find it'll probably fall over and things will get broken. That's a bit better. Okay. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip this forward, I'm going to hold the glass. Now this glass is actually latched in, so in, in theory it can't fall out. But do you think I trust that? No. I don't think anyone should. Um, especially given how expensive that glass would be if it were to get broken. So let me just tilt the thing forward, and it will just tilt forward nice and easily. Straightforward. Now, the next thing we have to do is actually shift the thing. It doesn't have to come forward too far, maybe a meter, something like that. Um, so, there's a few different ways of doing that. Um, one way that I see people uh, do this sometimes is they actually get underneath the machine. I'll tilt the camera down a little bit so you can see. They actually get underneath the machine like this and then lift it with their backs. Now this machine you could probably do that because the panel, yes, there's a dog by the way, hello dog. Um, the panel underneath this one is actually quite strong, uh, quite thick, but a lot of machines have really quite thin plywood under there and stuff like that, especially older machines. So, mm, if you know what you're doing, maybe. Um, Probably the most common thing that people do is just grab the machine by the front, lift, and then just pull. And these machines are pretty solid, um, but that does put a lot of stress on the back legs and on the back of the cabinet. Admittedly, I've never seen one breaking uh, from anyone doing it that way, but I uh, still don't really like it. It doesn't do carpet or any good and so on either. So, hmm. The way that I prefer to do it is by walking the machine. So I'm going to shift the camera just a little 
so you can see it as I move it forward. There we go, that should do the trick. So the way to do that is just by lifting on alternate corners. So if I lift this corner here, it lifts the weight off the leg on the same side and same on the other side. So what it means is I can lift this corner and move this forward and then the other side and just back and forth and kind of rock the machine at the same time. By doing that, it allows you to move the machine forward without putting too much stress on anything and you're not really twisting the cabinet a great deal either, although really they, they're uh, kind of designed for that anyway because they, you know, they get a bit of a hard time. So that should be quite a safe way of doing it. That's what I tend to do. So I'll do that now. So that should be plenty of room behind there. How much room there is if you can really tell yes hello yes you're in the way plenty of room there so what's going to happen is first thing I'm going to do is take the rear legs off and drop the back down onto the floor and then once that's done I'll be able to flip the machine back onto its flat back so actually onto the surface here and um, once that's done I can take the front legs off and it'll be ready to go. Now there is going to be some packing that I'll do as well. So yeah, we'll get onto that in just a moment. Okay, well what I'm going to do now is make a protector for the back glass. I mean, especially on this machine with the uh, mirrored back glass, it's quite important to protect that while it's being freighted. So what I've got here is a piece of polystyrene packing from a dishwasher, in fact, just a small dishwasher. So what I'm going to do, put that in there, and then cut it back to the right size, so that it will then sit in here and protect the back glass in case that does happen to get uh, shaken loose in transit. Spot on, doesn't need to be too accurate because I'm going to be taping this on with. Uh, well, I'll show you what I'm going to do. do it right now actually. The yellow kitchen cling film in this case. Now, this stuff is probably stronger than you might realize. Um, I wouldn't use it for anything particularly important, but uh, for this, all it really needs to do is just hold this in place so it doesn't drop off. So that'll hold that in place reasonably well. I'm going to put some packing tape around it just to give it a bit of extra strength, make sure nothing slips off. So that's fine. As I say, it doesn't really need to do anything other than make sure that piece of polystyrene stays basically in place. Uh, so that if, if the glass does come out, it'll just sit on top of that. This is actually going to be trapped between the back box and the top of the machine once it's folded forward as well. Might as well do that now, really. Actually. I can't do that quite yet. You can put something on here because this is going to be the last time this is going to go forward. 
something on here to protect this. This cling film is not really enough. Um, if it gets bounced around a little bit, it'll probably wear through the cling film and uh, damage the back box a little. You know, of course, nothing that you couldn't just touch up with some paint, but still. So let me go and find something to uh, protect that with. Okay, what I've got here is a couple of bits of quite tough builder's board. It's like uh, sort of thin cardboard, but it's very tough. So what I'm going to do is I'm just, I'm just going to tape this on in the right spots. Just use some regular old masking tape. I'm not going to put it on the paint because if this doesn't leave any residue, it'll be very easy to clean off the stainless steel or off the glass. But uh, if it gets on the paint, you might still be able to clean it off, but uh, it's be more difficult. Well, that's a lot better. <clears throat> right, now to the heavy lifting bit. Not my favourite because it's a bit hard on the back, but uh, I'll get it done. What I have to do now is get the back legs off. That's the most difficult part because um, there's a lot of weight on the back legs. <clears throat> and it's necessary to lift the thing um, while getting the, uh, the back legs off. There's several ways you can go about doing this. Um, people have sort of stands and chairs and stuff like that that they just rest the back of the machine on. But I don't actually find it makes it that much easier because if you want to get the back of the thing onto the ground, at some stage you're going to have to lift it off whatever it's on. So I just punish my back. I'll show you in a sec. Okay. So, this is the way I do this. There's all sorts of ways of doing this, but uh, well, this is it. These things are extremely handy if you're trying to do this. If you've got two people, it's a lot easier, but uh, with just one person, this means I can undo these bolts with just the one hand. It makes it a lot easier. First thing I'm going to do, put my leg underneath here, just support it, take the weight off this corner, lift it a little bit. So I can just knock that leg there off. One less leg, put that over there. So now if I take my leg out, it's still pretty much supported. In fact, I can just leave that hovering there and you know it will tip over with just a little bit of a, a tug, but I'm not going to be doing that. What that does mean though, is I can now put my leg underneath the other one, or the middle in fact, take this leg off. easiest thing but doable I didn't die didn't drop it on the dog hmm. right uh, yes you're in the way now Yash so the next thing I'm gonna have to do is tip the thing on its back and yes you are going to get squash puppy quite easy and this here no, actually, First thing I'm going to have to do, before I do that, thinking about it, is attach the uh, the back box so that doesn't fall backwards when I tip it up. Dog. Hello dog, you're in the way. Yep, so let me just get ready for that. Okay, so what I've done is I've put a couple of turns of this around the whole thing to hold the back box onto the machine when I tip it back. As you can see that there is basically, well it's like cling film, well it is cling film really, but uh, it's a little bit tougher than the regular kitchen stuff and of course it's also quite a bit larger. 
Now this is extremely useful stuff to have around if you ever need to package and freight anything, or anything large like this. Um, quite often uh, this gets used for um, attaching stuff to pallets. But uh, very handy for pinball machines. If I wrap it all the way around from top to bottom, it will also help protect the machine from scuffs and scrapes and so forth. Uh, not from really heavy bangs, but um, it's up to the freight company to avoid those. If we trust them. I've actually had fairly good luck with them, so... Uh. Right, so now all I have to do is tip the thing back uh, and then wrap it all up with this. Actually, no, of course, I've got to take the front legs off before I wrap it, so... Let's do that. Are you going to be able to see me? Let me just adjust the camera a little. There we go. Okay. It's, be it's not going anywhere. Fine. Right now, this machine for some reason has one smaller leg bolt than uh, the others. It is very common that uh, find machines with different size leg bolts on there. Maybe one of them got damaged at some, some stage. So, normally, these things are I think it's 5 8 uh, uh, imperial size. Smaller one, maybe 9 16, something like that. So it's, uh, if you were doing this, it's a good idea to have both 5 8 and 9 16 spanners or sockets or whatever you're using on hand so that you can deal with this. So there we go. All the legs are off it. So next thing I need to do is wrap it up. But what I am going to do before that, I think, is actually wrap up the, uh, the legs and uh, put them somewhere maybe, I don't know, I'll figure out where to put them in a sec. So what I'm going to do in order to uh, package up the legs is I'm just going to wrap them up with uh, the uh, packaging cling film that you saw a moment ago. The trick then is going to be, how is the guy who's receiving this going to be able to tell which leg is which? Well, it doesn't really matter too much which of the two back legs go on and which side on the back and say on the front, they're interchangeable, but front and back, they are a little bit different. So, there's the back one, as you can see, there's quite a lot of thread there between the foot and the bottom of the leg, and there's the front one, which is screwed all the way down. It's pretty normal. Um, so the tall one goes on the back, short one goes on the front. But in this case, to make it a bit easier, I've actually written in pen front right on that one, for instance, FR, and rear left on that one, RL. So rear or front first, and then left or right second. So you'll be able to tell which is which. Should work. Once that's done, I'll probably just put the package on top of here about the same width as the back box. You can actually see that. Let me just tilt the camera down a little bit. So, wrap them up and stick them back there. That should work. Okay, last step. I've wrapped up the, uh, yes, hello dog. I've wrapped up the legs and the balls. I actually forgot to record taking the balls out of the thing, but, um, Generally, most machines you should take the balls out of before setting them up like this because otherwise they'll drop out of the top under the apron and fall into the back of the play field or even into the bottom of the machine. And then, well, it probably wouldn't break anything, but uh, the balls could get lost and certainly the person receiving it would not know where to find them and could break things. So yeah, definitely best to remove them. Which I've done and they're packed up with the legs and the bolts and, uh, and so forth pretty much ready to go, so all I have to do now is wrap it a few times around with the uh, packaging wrap and it'll be pretty much ready to go at that point I think. Now, 
don't always trust the wrap to come up to uh, stay stuck together. So, a bit of packaging tape around that prevents that from happening. tape on the top just to prevent the top from getting scuffed by anything that the freight people could put on top of it. Hopefully they don't put anything on it, but best to be safe. Well, done. Ready to ship, I think. I think anything's going to come loose on that. Fingers crossed, hopefully it arrives safely.